Hi guys, welcome to Talk To Me Tuesday for Tuesday, April 18th, 2017. This is Jennifer. If you're paying any kind of attention, you have already figured out that I am sick. I have a pretty nasty head cold, been sick for a couple days, but I have a pile of stuff to share and a little bit of sickness is not going to keep me away from you guys since I cannot transfer germs through the internet. I had quite an eventful week last week. I got the opportunity to go do some shopping with some friends, which I haven't done in a really long time. Two of my quilty friends, I should say, and we ended up going down to Buda to B&B quilting, and then we went down to New Braunfels to go to the Quilt House. Both of those are local quilt stores in the Central Texas area, just a little bit south of Austin. Because it is my birthday month, I did a little bit of extra shopping for myself. I picked up four spools, the other two I've already used, of uh, Robeson Anton. See if you can see that Robeson Anton embroidery thread, which I had not heard of before, but when I looked it up on Amazon, it had really good reviews. Thursdays at the Quilt House, um, they actually have like a little sew, there's a sewing store attached to it, and I'm sorry, but I do not remember the name of it, but you can get to it through the Quilt House. It's literally next door. They're connected, and there's a, an opening from one store to the other. Thursday is Thread Thursday, which I couldn't resist because you guys know how much I love alliteration with uh, names of days. Free Pattern Friday, Talk to Me Tuesday, etc. And Thread Thursday, you get 20% off when you buy four spools. So I figured I would try it and see if my machine likes it, and it does. It likes it a lot, and there's a lot on these spools. One of the ladies that I was shopping with is a much more accomplished machine embroiderer than I am, and I was asking her about scissors for machine embroidered applique, like applique in the hoop. She recommended these scissors precision cut applique scissors by Inspira. And you can see they're angled so you can get right down there when you're cutting the, the fabric around the applique. So I've tried a couple things, which I'll show you in just a second. I also picked up a new eight and a half inch Creative Grids ruler. I have been replacing all my rulers over the last couple years because I've been quilting for over 10 years now. It's I'm getting closer to maybe 13 so, 14 years. So my eight and a half inch ruler was starting to really die on me. The corners of your ruler start to wear away. It's called ruler rot and your squares stop being squares and mine was starting to do that. So also a lot of the lines were gone. I now have a pretty good collection of creative grids, but I also have Omni Grid, which I like too. The other thing I bought, Shock of Shockers, was fabric. I picked up some Pokemon fabric for my daughter who has been learning to sew, and I sent her a picture and she said, absolutely, I need that. So she'll be moving home next month. So I've got some fabric for her for sewing projects of the future. And then I went a little wild and bought some fat quarters. I bought just a wide variety of things. I did do a little video um, on my Instagram. I'll see if I can download that and put it in. These will be for me, but they will also be for prizes and things like that, because you guys know I love to share. Before I went out with my friends on Thursday, I uh, took advantage of one of my clearance t-shirts that I had bought at Target, and I took one of the designs that I had purchased from Urban Threads. You may have seen it on a dish towel that I made previously. I put it on not on the front of my shirt this time, but on the back. I don't know if you can see that. I hope you can, because I cannot look at the viewfinder while I'm doing this. But I did wear this on my quilt outing and not a single person said anything about it and I was so surprised. It is sort of tonal. I try to do make it more subtle. But the next one I might just go all the way crazy and make it a complete contrasting color. So regarding the applique scissors, I had done a little in the hoop applique with my friend Domine when she was here. We did a, a chocolate Easter bunny. It was a freebie from rivermillembroidery.com, I think. I wanted to try a luggage tag. Um, I had purchased an outline, like a luggage tag outline, when which really for doing like a quilt label wasn't really intended for applique so I've been playing with the design a little bit and adding elements to it and changing it a bit so I could make an actual lug luggage tag. So I'll show you my first one. Came out kind of huge. Apologize for the finger but you don't need my phone number. I had some trouble with the like you know I've got a lot of raw edges and I hadn't really figured out how to deal with that yet. I made another one. This one is smaller and I like the size a lot better. I still had some raw edges but I figured out how to make that go away and I'm gonna make another one because I have a couple of different sewing machine cases and I would like to have one for each case. So this one is going to go in my feather white case and then I'm going to make another one to go on the my little shoulder bag that I carry my genome in when I go sewing places. Next thing up is more fat quarters. I have been receiving my Talk To Me Tuesday fat quarter birthday, whatever we called it, swap. And Crystal, I did receive yours, but as per your wishes, I will save yours until next week. So I haven't actually 
opened any of these yet, I was waiting to uh, share this with you guys. The first thing is not actually a swap, but it is a fat quarter with a birthday card, so I felt like I should share it. This came from Alita, who is known as Twi'lok online, and she sent me a fat quarter with a birthday card, and I could not share it with you guys. She also sent me these really cute Harry Potter page clips. So first I will open my fat quarter swap from Terry. So it's a birthday card with back order and the the package says open very carefully which I did and I haven't even looked yet so this should be fun. She sent me a sweet card that has birds on a wire and a really pretty batik here but also in my package is something in bubble wrap. It looks like a handmade book. You guys know Terry is multi-talented and that's what it looks like. That's a little handmade book. Isn't that sweet? The hearts on the end. That is awesome. How cute is that? Thank you, Terry. Next, I will open my package from Jules. She used Harry Potter stamps. I feel like you guys are conspiring. I got another beautiful batik from Jules. Look at that yellow. I never have enough good yellow, so that's awesome. And she drew a birthday cake on my card. Got a beautiful card. It's New Mexico with the beautiful sunny uh, fat quarter. Thank you, Jules. Also going to open Laura's today. Oh, Laura. Laura sent me a Sherlock Holmes card. And she sent me Sherlock Holmes fabric. Not only do I love newsprint fabric, but I love fabric that has that sepia tone going on. So that is doubly awesome. Thank you, Laura. It's especially appropriate with the uh, stitch that I just figured out. Maybe I'll make a new one in black so I can use it with my Sherlock Holmes fabric. Maybe? Maybe so. I have just a couple more Fat Quarter just to show you guys. These are not for me. These are for the Fat Quarter Lotto. They have been coming in fast and furiously. I've been trying to share them online, but like I said, I've been sick, so I didn't check my mail for a couple days. We are up to 44 Fat Quarters. This is what I've got so far. We've got 44 Fat Quarters for our drawing. Hopefully there'll be a few more. I'm hoping for at least 50, but uh, 44 would be a really nice prize all by itself. So I will be giving these away live, live, on top to me Tuesday next week. I will have the drawing. So if you have not gotten your fat quarters in yet, be sure to get those in. Um, I will be accepting them. I'll probably check the mail on Tuesday before I draw just to make sure I've gotten everything in that I can. And if any come in after, I will probably just put them in the package for the winner. If by some miracle we go over 50, um, my plan is if we make it to 100, then I will split and we'll have two winners. It is possible because I, like I said, I've got, they've been fast and furious just the last couple of days. So we could very well double this by the end of the week. For anywhere near a hundred, I will put fat quarters in to make it a hundred. And that way we'll have two winners instead of one. I have a tiny bit of housekeeping I want to share. I've been working on some things for Patreon and one of the things I talked about before was how I want to make my patterns free for all. And I think I've finally figured out how to do the goals on Patreon. That, that was a little bit of a mystery to me. And I, I sort of put something out there, but I haven't been really happy with it. So I'm going to change it hopefully today or tomorrow. It depends on how I feel and how long I can last sitting at my computer today. My current goal is 250 for the first goal. I'm going to change it to 100 and after $100, the first pattern that will be free will be Waiting for Rain, which is the tree pattern that goes with my online class that's free on YouTube. So it'll basically be a free block, and then every $50 after that, there will be a free pattern of some variety, and like 100 will be that free pattern, and then 150 will be a different free pattern, and then 200 will be a different free pattern. And by free pattern, I mean I am going to retroactively make one of my for sale patterns free. And I need your help with this because what I'm going to do is put a poll on Patreon. You pick your favorites. They will all eventually be free, but the order that you choose will be the order that I put them in for goals. So the one you choose for the one you want most to be free, that'll be the 150, the 200, the 250, etc. Um, I hope to have that poll up in the next couple of days and I will post on my social media when it's ready to go. Again, if you have any questions about that or anything else about the whole Patreon thing, just let me know. It's patreon.com slash so hooked. The next installment of Paper Piecing Vintage will be Monday. Thank goodness I've worked ahead because I have, since I've been so sick, I have not set up my sewing machine at all. Uh, that will be Monday and we are at block eight on Monday. So if you're working ahead, you go ahead and show those blocks. I don't have a problem with that at all. And Tomorrow will be Goblin King on Phantom and Stitches, and we're getting close to wrapping up because the Goblin King will end in May. So we have another month and a couple weeks of that, and then all of those blocks will be available and ready for you to finish up your quilt. If you are a Linus volunteer, the website updates will be done soon. I have not picked up my camera yet, so I can't even start. As soon as I feel like driving to, to go pick up my camera, I will take care of that. Don't forget to stop by Phantom and Stitches. Don't forget Sew Hooked for uh, Paper Piecing Vintage on Monday, Free Pattern Friday on 
Friday. Last Friday were the quilt layouts that I designed for Princess Bride a couple years ago on Phantom and Stitches, so those, that was a little bit different. And that's it. Drawing next week for Fat Quarter Lotto. Remember to send your uh, Talk To Me Tuesday swaps, and I'm gonna go take a nap. You guys have a good week. I'll see you next week. Bye.